Good afternoon or morning or, or evening or wherever it may be when you're watching this. Um, I just realized we have so many people who watch this at various times. We've also got brothers and sisters from all over the world who watch this. This is a, a humbling, uh, humbling experience, and, and I really are just am grateful for you. I'm grateful for, for your helping us with our ministry. If you can, like, share, comment, get this message out there so other people can hear about this. We need to get the gospel message out. And if it's not about this video series in particular or this podcast or, or whatever else, do what you can to share the gospel. We live in a world full of death, and every single day someone dies. Every single day people are living with death, spiritually speaking. If you're spiritually dead when your body dead when your body gives out, there is no more hope. And so our role as believers in Christ is to spread the gospel message. And the best way we could be grounded in that spreading of God's message is by reading his word. We need to be in this daily. We need to be in the word of God every single day. We need to be here and we need to be, be uh, seeking it out. We need to be seeking to hear from God. And the best way to hear from God is through his word. Whatever God may speak to us in our prayer life, through our circumstances, or whatever else, it will never be contradicted by this. God will always affirm what he has to say by his word. And so, so, so daily spend some time in this. With that being said, we have, like I said, we have a, a following from all over the world. All of us are believers and brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus and there came a time when Jesus prayed for all believers. We saw earlier that he prayed, uh, thanking God for, for what God was about to do through him. He prayed specifically for those disciples that were with him. And now he prays for those who are going to believe because of them. Let's take a look at this final portion of the prayer. John chapter 17, verse 20. I pray not only for these meaning the disciples, but also for those who believe in me through their message. May they all be one as you, Father, are in me and I am in you. One of the saddest things to me, and it's amazing because this has been on my heart for the last few days, is how nasty and ugly Christians can be towards one another. There are several different denominations and and I'm going to tell you, there's not a single doctrinal difference that should be dividing us, but it does. If we can stand upon the gospel of Jesus Christ through the word of God, not through our traditions, not through our, our, our teachers or founders' interpretations, but through the word of God, if we can stand upon it, we can find the common ground in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Christ prayed for you. He prayed for all of us to be unified the body of Christ is not divided. There is not one part that is better than the other. If we are standing upon the word of God in Christ Jesus, championing the gospel, then we are brothers and sisters in Christ. But if we are going to anything else, then yes, that's when we need to call out false teachings. But just because someone doesn't do it our way, or how we interpret a minor point of Scripture, doesn't mean that they are divided of us. He prays here, may they all be one. Christ prayed that his body would be unified. And if you look at the places where the church is most oppressed, they don't care about denominationalism. They care about unity in the body of Christ, standing firm for Christ, and spreading the message of Christ, in spite of what happens to their physical bodies. Right now, there are believers all over the world being arrested. And we're here, sitting here choking a camel to try and strain out a gnat. Another word Jesus used in his woes against the religious elite of his day. He continues, though, listen to this. May they also be one in us. So the world may believe you sent me. Do you understand this? It goes back to what he said. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another. All the world will know you are my disciples if you love one another. The unity of the church is what is going to speak to the rest of the world. 
of the love of Christ. Not how well we can exposit the Scriptures. Not how well we can uh, show how religious we are by the things we do. Not how well we can demonstrate things. Those are all acts of the flesh, works to try and demonstrate how great we are. But if we show unity and love towards one another, if we stand upon God's Word and build one another up the way He commands us to, the world will see and know the love of Christ. He goes on. I've given them glory. You have given me. May they be one as we are one. He repeated this three times. That's so important. If it's said three times. Three is the number of perfection. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Three days in the ground. Jesus is trying to give an emphasis here to all believers. He wants us to understand that unity in the body is what he calls us to. Not staking out territories and fighting for sheep. If we would but put aside our petty differences and look to seek and save the lost and look to build one another up in love, what could the church do? For the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're called to unity. Jesus Christ three times prayed over you and over me and over all believers. For unity. Now, do we join ourselves to those who are playing the harlot with the world? Absolutely not. Again, we stand upon the word of God. But for minor, minor tiny doctrinal differences... That shouldn't matter. We should love one another and build up the body so that we may be effective in preaching the gospel of Christ to the rest of the world. Jesus goes on. I am in them, and you are in me. Repeats it again. May they be completely one, so the world may know you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire those you have given me to be with me where I am. Then they will see my glory, which you have given me because you have loved me before the world's foundation. Righteous Father, the world has not known you. However, I have known you, and these have known that you sent me. I made your name known to them and will make it known. So the love you have loved me with may be in them, and I may be in them. Do you understand, church, that the love in which we are called to love one another is the most important thing we can do? Jesus said that all of the law and the prophets, indeed all of Scripture, hinges on two commands, which really in his mind are the same command, two sides of the same coin. That you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said they'll know a tree by its fruits. What, life, what fruit is your life producing? Are you producing fruit of unity that Christ prayed for for you, over you, with you? Are you standing on opinion? Are you standing on how you do things? Are you standing upon what some preacher says? I want to tell you all something. The Word of God, the Bible... This is what it's about. Standing upon God's word in unity. We can set aside minor things, but we will show God's love for the world greater when we love as Christ commanded us to love. Yeah, we can do great things. We can uh, give to the poor. We can uh, be charitable. We can do all sorts of things. But if we are not loving one another, we're missing the boat. Christ says that this love will unify us with him, will draw us to himself. Are we loving each other in this way? This is a hard thing for many of us. But we need to love each other in this way. We need to love each other with the love that Christ commands us to. We need to stand together upon the word of God in Christ Jesus, one body with many different parts, with Christ as our head. This is important. 
if we're going to look like Jesus, we need to love the way Jesus calls us to. And he himself even stated, if you love me, you will obey my commands. And one of those commands was to love each other. He prayed for that unity. Christ prayed over you that you would be unified with all believers in him. Measure yourself by that today. How are you loving other believers? How are you loving the church? I want to tell you all, it doesn't matter what someone else did to you. This command, once you hear it, it's not for how someone else treats you. It's for how you treat all others. The command is for the recipient, not the one receiving the love. The recipient of the command is to obey the command, not the person that the command is about. But I could be wrong. Let me know what you think. Stand upon the word of God. Put scriptures in your in your defenses for your points. I'd love to talk about it with you. Uh, like, share, comment. Help us get this out there. Let's discuss this. If you have a counter video, I'd love to watch it. And I'd love to discuss it with you. That being said, let's make sure that we are standing upon the word of God. So that we can look like Christ. That we can uh, let the Holy Spirit, through the washing of the water with the word, present us to him as a radiant and resplendent bride. I love you. I'm praying for you. And I will see you on Thursday.